Chapter two is on numeration systems. And these are the sections of our text. And right now we're gonna talk about 2.1, ways of expressing values of quantities. So the need to quantify and express the values of quantities have led humans to invent various numeration systems. Throughout history, people have found ways to express values of quantities they measured in several ways. And remember, we have learned the difference between a value and a quantity. Quantity is something abstract, like the weight of my cat. <laughs> the value is about 17 pounds. So pounds is the unit, 17 is the value. The quantity is the weight of my cat, he's adorable. Okay, <clears throat> so I want to distinguish between a number now and a numeral. A number is an actual idea, like that value we just talked about, 17. The numeral is a symbol that represents that value. So here's an example. Um, the concept of a number like if you have three of something, like three dots or three balls, right? There's some idea there of quantity. There's so many of them, there's three of them. But then here are two different examples of numerals that actually stand for that value three, right? There's the, the numeral three that we're so accustomed to and then on the right, that's a Roman numeral. Um, so yeah, we call a quantity is something that can be measured like the amount of circles on this slide. All right, and, and I wanted to mention here two different main learning theories that are utilized when talking about how children learn. And you'll probably get more of this in your education classes. Uh, Piaget, he had a stage theory of cognitive development, which is a description of cognitive development as four distinct stages in children, sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete, and formal. And so the Piagetian view of learning is that the focus is really on the individual, and they're sort of, you know, I want to say like mental capacity, but their mental and emotional development. So it's very much focused on that single child. Vygotsky, on the other hand, his emphasis was on a social plane. So Vygotsky's cognitive development theater, a theory postulates that social interaction is fundamental to cognitive development. Vygotsky's theory is comprised of concepts such as culture-specific tools, language, and thought interdependence, and the zone of proximal development, the ZPD. So the ZPD is actually a very well-known concept from Vygotsky, and it's this idea that a person has a certain amount of knowledge their existing knowledge. So let's say like that's my knowledge. So I'm in here and that's like the sum of my knowledge. <laughs> I'm trying to draw like a little stick figure. Um, the zone of proximal development says, you know, we could build on that existing knowledge and, you know, extend my understanding out to a certain place, right? Simply building on my existing knowledge. So that's that zone of what I'm now able to learn given what I've already been able to understand, right? So in other words, you couldn't kind of take a five-year-old and throw them into a graduate course in nuclear physics right? That would be way outside their zone of proximal development. 
So you have to just stretch a little bit from where the child already is, which is why it's so important to assess what a, a child or a student already understands. So then you can scaffold from there. And scaffolding is a term that is used in Vygotskyan theory. Let me just clear this. So I have some videos that you guys can watch on your own time um, regarding Piaget's famous conservation tasks. And I'm absolutely fascinating, I think. I even kind of gave a couple of these to my grandson. And these are a couple of videos to give you more of a feel for Vygotsky. And one comment I want to make here is that it's not like who has the better theory. Um, sometimes you want to look at something through a particular lens and both learning theories are fruitful for understanding how teaching and learning is taking place. So they're both valuable perspectives. Okay, back to numeration systems. A numeration system is a set of symbols with rules for expressing quantities. Um, I've included a link here that shows various numeration systems. And even though these are not specifically uh, prescribed in the Common Core State Standards, these often do show up in the early grades in your curriculum materials. So of course, there's the Hindu Arabic numeral system. That is what we use. It's called the Hindu Arabic numeral system. And of course, we're going to be spending lots of time on this um, as we move along. But right, we have these 10 digits, et cetera, et cetera. There is place value. It's a positional system. Um, there's the tally system, and I think this is fairly common. This is really handy. Sometimes I'll even use this when I'm in a face-to-face -face class and the students are walking in. Maybe I want to know how many students are there, and I've already counted like 26. And then as students might come in late, I might just do a, use this tally system to find out the total number of students and um, then I know like how many to put into groups and things like that. Right, so you have four vertical little marks and when you get a group of five, you put a slash through it. And there are lots of other systems in here as well. Egyptian numeral system. And again, it's not uncommon to see these in young children's um, curriculum. So obviously a bit more cumbersome to write with these. <laughs> Imagine expressing your like date of birth and age and phone number, you know, and having to draw all of these pictures. But um, kids, you know, they have a good time utilizing these. So you can see right here, 2,320,111 is written like so. Um, and it's useful for children to see various numeration systems so that they're able to distinguish between a number and a numeral and not to confound the two. All right. So that is it for 2.1. I will stop the recording.